So Andy is the executive producer of the Grand Tour. Um, he was formerly the executive producer of Top Gear, um, which he relaunched with Jeremy Clarkson in 2002. 2002. Um, but I think you were also involved in the original version of Top Gear. I was on it briefly. On screen, yeah, as a reporter, was... naked, I think. There's a reason I wasn't on it for long, because I was <laughs> shit. Yeah, but, he's, um, uh, he's subsequently been behind camera. Better behind camera. the camera, yeah, I'd like to think. Make of that what you will. Okay. Um, you were at school with Jeremy at... Repton, which, guess what, is a public school for boys. What are you saying? Um, uh, where new boys were called Stigs, is that right? That that's, is right, yeah. That's where the Stig came yeah. from. Um, and I should say, uh, for full disclosure, I've known Andy for over 10 years, uh, worked with him a lot. Yeah. Um, and I was also, for a couple of years, the commissioner of Top Gear at the BBC. Um, so, we've just heard from Roy about uh, what he's looking for and inviting British producers to work with Amazon. Yep. You are a British producer working with who Amazon. has landed one of the biggest non-scripted deals. Um, what's it like? Well, working with Amazon? Yeah. Is Roy here? <laughs> uh, yeah, he is. So, yeah, he's brilliant. It's, um, <laughs> never had such a good time. It's, no, it is fantastic, but really demanding because... If you think about it, they're a massive corporation already. Big brand, a lot of success under their belt, but they're new to television. So when they come into television, they approach it like, you know, full tilt with a load of ambition. So when we signed the deal with them, they didn't know what kind of, how we make the show we make, which is a lot of actuality and a lot of endless rushes and blah, blah, blah. And we didn't know what kind of show they wanted. And then they said, this is just an example. They want everything in 4K. They want a specific frame rate. They want it in HDR. And we're like, fuck, because of the cost and, and all those sort of things. Um, so that's been a nightmare. And now when we're going on our shoots, which were always a bit of a caravan, you've got like data wranglers and stuff like that. So that's another nerd you've got to talk to. And, um, <laughs> and we're just sort of like, it's big. But it's really nice to be pushed like that. It's really, really nice to be pushed because... Best will in the world, would we, if we'd have carried on, pushed ourselves to another level? I don't think so. You know, it's, that is Amazon who are sort of doing that. Um, what else? They are... There's a lot of money. No, it's peanuts, it's pennies. <laughs> you get to look at Jeremy in 4K. Calm down, ladies. And um, you get um, the marketing and stuff that they're putting behind it is actually overwhelming. I'm like thinking, is this like a new Marvel movie or... <laughs> A yeah, we saw it on show. the escalators. I know, it's... and it's like, and I'm going, stop, 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 because it's like, we're bringing back comfort food. It's not bloody Star Wars, you know, but <laughs> they, they want to go big like that, but there's a lot of will behind it. Um, first meeting, they're good at catering if anybody goes around for a pitch. Well, that's don't probably just as well. No, don't eat lunch, because <laughs> the first time we went for a meeting with them, there was like me, Jeremy, Richard, James, and our sort of lawyers, there's five of us, Somebody on the phone must have said there's 50 of them. Because we walked in, and it was like a northern wedding. There was like the catering laid out. And it was like in the afternoon, so there's like we'd had lunch. And we thought, shit. So James and I got our plates. I've got chicken drumsticks and all that. And Jeremy had said, I'm going to tell them about my idea for the tent, which is our new studio, touring the tent. And the lawyer that we got said, whatever you do, don't mention the tent, because we don't know what it's going to cost. We don't know if it's possible. And what if they really like it? So Jeremy, do not mention the tent. So there's a silence. And then Jeremy goes, got this idea for a tent. And, like, <laughs> and I'm thinking, I've not made a dent in the Scotch eggs. And he's gone on about a tent. And then it stuck on from there. But yeah, it was happy families from the start like that. Um, so obviously, I, when I was at ITV, we were bidding for you, for you guys, yep. um, along with others, I yep. believe. Yep. Um, what made you choose Amazon? Presumably, the money helped. My own, just money. <laughs> it was... Um, and how much was it? Well, what's in the papers is bollocks. I so mean, it's, it's a good four, whack. Not four million and a half? No, that's bullshit, no. It's, but what can you do? Say, no, it's three million, nine hundred ninety, you know. <laughs> it's, um, it's a good whack, but, like I say, we are spending a lot, and... Um, that's, yeah, that is going out the door hand over fist because of what we have to do. And making 
I come back to that point, making a drama in 4K makes a lot of sense. Making the kind of actuality show we make Where you just in 4K keep rolling. does yeah. not make sense yeah. at all. But that's what we've been tasked to do. I think the other reason, though, the main reason is we do get left alone, which anybody who's worked with us will know we like. Um, but we're left alone in because it's logical that they don't, because they're a new outfit, they're like a blank canvas. So if you think about our show, it's got, as in Jeremy Richard and James doing cars, that's got a strong identity now. That's, that's what it's three twats who've been doing the same thing for a long time, and they do their thing. But you, you're going to go new world at the end of the day because you don't want another channel putting its identity. We, don't, we can't make, with all due respect, to an ITV show or a Channel 4 show or a discovery version we have to be left alone to make just what we want to do in our bubble and they're very happy to do that because they're not bringing any broadcaster baggage along to put on so top no of no editorial policy there's a couple of pages <laughs> i sent um <laughs> with some stuff on it but i'm which i'm gonna read <laughs> but um they're like a lawyer there's more of that but editorial policy they like a, a lawyer Ooh, well you've got lawyer. lawyers over well there. if we I don't know. You might ask me question six about uh, <laughs> format and stuff. But um, when we get into that, yeah. Oh, because of the stuff you can bring from the BBC. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, look, um, where, just tell us where you are in terms of production. We're going to have a sneak preview of the show. But you've got one show in the can? We've got one show in the can. Like, we shot a studio. We shot one of us. It's show two. We've shot show two first. Don't ask. And we've got 90-odd percent of the film's done. So now we're just, it's post and all the nightmare that comes with that. Plus we're concentrating on the studio. So you also had to set up your own production company to we make this. Did. What, what was that like? Well, it's been a big scramble because we signed our deal in August last year and we thought Amazon will give us a few months to just sort of scratch our navels and think of a new show. And they just said, no, we want by next fall or autumn, we want 12 shows, and we had no team, no office. We'd never run a production company. We had, so we had to get all that together, find a team, find, no, 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 think of new things to do, deal with all the legal stuff, and then start thinking of ideas and filming. And it normally took us a year to do a 12 Top Gear, so it was a real scramble. So we thought, right, we'll prioritize, first job, so we bought four Reliant Robins, company cars, <laughs> 15 grand, not one of them's done a fucking mile. <laughs> they are a waste of time. They all broke down. Um, so we got offices in Chiswick and... Um, Plenty of parking space. Loads really. of parking space. Entry code's still the same. Nought, 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 if you want to go in. <laughs> and, um, but Richard, was, I think, was keener to be in slightly more salubrious... No, Jeremy wanted Mayfair, and we're like, <laughs> why? And he went, well, I'll go for lunch at Scott's. Like, <laughs> anyway, that's what you do in production. And we're like, you really haven't got, a, you know, an idea. <laughs> So um, Lunch we did quite that, important. but everybody kind of chipped, you know, everyone mucked in. We sent Richard out to Knight Frank to look for offices. <laughs> and he's coming back with you because he lives in Herefordshire. So he's like, oh, look, electricity. And then he's like, <laughs> and he's putting all this stuff out and he's going, look, and it's a shop or a sort of industrial thing. We're like, no, offices, you tit. I'll just go back. Um, but we are match fit at getting filming done. So we kind of, we just hit it hard and we got quite a lot of the old team that we really kind of needed and wanted like directors and editors and stuff like that without them we couldn't have done it and then we got a new team which was great um young kids and um gave them some of our money <laughs> not a lot but and um and then and off there. you went and off we went so this session is obviously mostly about the grand tour but i just want to go back to the events that led to it being Why, created you talk about the old team. Yeah. Um, so at the beginning of last year, before the incidents, the events in Yorkshire, um, yeah, well, I think in January, you yeah. described 2015, so the previous year, as an Anus Aribolus for Top Gear. Yeah, it was. So what, what was going on at Top Gear? What, what was going wrong? It was, I think... It was a perfect storm that was coming because we had that show got bigger and bigger and bigger and we are we didn't because it kind of got bigger and bigger by accident by the time 
We never really adjusted to that. And we were collapsing under the weight of the work we were doing. And we were like, you're into series 22 and you're thinking, are we going to get 10 million a week on the seven day live and all that? We still need that. So you just, you focus on that. And we'd had shit like Argentina go wrong and that sort of stuff. So it was all building. And I'm speaking to somebody who loves the BBC. And there were a lot of people there that were great with us. Some people weren't great with us and didn't want us there. So it became a battle. Everything became personal. It became confrontational. And I think when everything went to shit in March, that was the crux point. There was no way back because it was going to be a victory for somebody. It wasn't going to be a resolution. And I think some people didn't have the will to make it work on management side. I thought, you know, they didn't want us. I didn't have the maturity to make it work either. So what do you mean by make it work? To mend it. To mend it. To but, mend it, yeah. But what did you think? Everyone given had the, taken the... their positions. We were all entrenched. And that was... What did you think should have happened? Well, what should the punishment have been? Hundred lines? No, it'd be. Um, they should have delved into him and got, you know, big fines, make us all stop, that kind of thing. And is that what you wanted? They sh and also, there wasn't a. There should have been a kind of realization that we had. We'd been like investigated internally. There was a sort of finding that we were we had a broken relationship that was obvious to everybody i think you start from that broken relationship because there's no point in killing the show mm. so it was um it was a sad but my point is we were to blame too we were i was entrenched i was throwing my toys out the pram i was you know vicious in my in in my in my sort of reaction to everything and um, it became thumping heads, which was sad because there were so many people that actually were willing for it to work. But the key players were doing that, and I was, I was one of them. Did it, did it occur to you to stay at the BBC without Jeremy and keep going with Top Gear? No, I mean, I didn't leave to go with Jeremy because we had nothing to go to. I left. We had no... Nobody had called. It was just like, go. Would, and without the show, the show compensated for everything. If we had a good show, we had good viewers, it was like the thing we protected. But without that, there was no reason. We were just left with this divorce sort of hanging over us. So we thought, well, let's get on with the divorce. That was my view. Let's all just go our separate ways and, um, and see what happens later on, you know. And were Richard and James on board from the word no, go? No, they were... Um, I mean, it's a matter of public record. The BBC made a play for them. But we all wanted to stay together. But it was a case of we had to get something together before the four of us could be together. And um, I didn't know what I was going to do. I absolutely, I didn't have a clue what I was going to do. So, so obviously, you and Jeremy had relaunched the show in 2002 and it built it up. But it had these very kind of well-known, much-loved format points, like the Cool Wall, the Stig, the racetrack at Dunsfold. Yeah. You had to, you had to, all that belonged to the BBC, so you had to walk away from all of that. So yeah. when it came to thinking about a new car show, were you daunted by the fact you were effectively going to have to start again, or did you feel that you still had enough? Well, the, the biggest thing we had was those three, because that show what is those three doing their thing? It's not, a, it's not a great format in the way that X Factor was or, you know, Strictly is or anything like that. There's, no, there's nothing that you hang on to. You can just move it around. It is those three. So we had those three, and that was fine. And then the rest of it was like, then the lawyers come in, which does get hilarious, because you've got these meetings where, can James May still say cock, or are the BBC <laughs> going to sue? And we're like... <laughs> And James is going, I've always said cock. So we're like, okay, well... So, we'll, well, hang on, it's win-win, because if we get sued for James saying cock, that's brilliant. Um, 
And then they, they got funnier and funnier. So like this year, we went to Namibia to make a big film. And um, the lawyers went, right. Um, they got out a film that we'd done a, in Botswana. And the lawyers go through everything. And they go, well, there's a scene in there where you're in the middle of the Okavango. And you go, this scenery is beautiful. So watch that you don't do that. <laughs> so we're like, all right. So we're in the like, desert in Namibia, the skeleton coast. And we've got to go, for legal reasons, <laughs> this scenery is shit. You know, what, how are you? So it got a bit silly at the start, start point. But, you know, you, it doesn't take a rocket scientist. There's no stig, there's no track, there's no dunsfold. What we wanted to protect was the films, most of all, because they're just a sort of natural, evolving thing. And that's So we worked on the studio and all those other elements. So actually... It wasn't daunting because decisions are made for you. You can't have a stig, you can't have Dunsfold, and so on and so on. Yeah. So I think we're going to get a sneak preview of the tent, but, but let's just talk about that, unpack that a bit. So the studio, you came up with this idea of the tent. The tent moves around, <coughs> is that right? It moves to a different location it each time? It does now, because Jeremy said it in that meeting, and Amazon <laughs> said, we'll, we'll give you your... 88 million pounds an hour episode if you, um, if you move that thing around. So, yeah, we... But the logistics of that must oh, be God. quite... I mean, it's just... It does my fucking head in. It was... Um, he saw True Detective, right? There's an episode in True Detective where there's a sort of Baptist meeting. Yeah, but it's quite a, it's quite a small tent. He's unemployed. He's watching a lot of box sets. So <laughs> he's watching this, and he, he goes, oh, the tent, the tent, and then he goes, we'll move it around. We'll be rootless, you know. And then... Mary went, Berry has a, has a tent, but that just stays in... Yeah, but that's like, they'll move a wedding in straight after that. <laughs> and it's like... But ours, so we've got 300 people in it. Then you realise that the floor has got to be stable. The cameramen start... They're cameramen you've worked with, Phil Petrovsky, are like moaning bastards, so they want all perfect. So you've got to, like, stabilise the floor. Then what if it rains? So it's got to be made... Of, you can't pack it and send it away. It's a special material. And so on and so on. And are the crew local crew, or do you fly the crew from? There's a mix. We had to bring in a, some 4K guys from Holland who know about 4K live, and then they built a new server to deal with the 4K frame rate. The 23 point. Thanks for that, Roy. 23.9. <laughs> uh, they built this new server, and it's all all this sort of stuff. So we got we got new people in like that, and then the tent itself is. Um, we do like the look of it because it's kind of grand tour sort of age of travel. It looks quite old, you know, quite steamshipish. So it looks better than us, that's for sure. And it's like quite classy. And um, so, how how far in what sort of construction is it? I mean, is it, it how, can go how up far in, a, in advance does it have to go up? It could go up in two or three days. But we did, we thought we'll do that rock thing where you get another tent and leapfrog. So that's what big bands do. They have two sets. So we thought, we, we've got to do all the studios, you know, one a week. So you get one tent there, one tent there, do, 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 do. And then some men build them, and then they, like, we go in it, do our thing, fuck off, next tent. Uh, you know, write, have a week in between, write the script or whatever for the next film. And then it goes like that. And is that how you're doing it? Well, it better bloody have be, because if we don't, we're screwed, because... Now we've got to hit our targets for delivering. Yeah. We have strict that, target. And that they'll sounds send quite a, important. They'll send a hitman. <laughs> Amazon Direct or whatever it is. Next day. <laughs> next day delivery. Um, so it'll be a drone. <laughs> it will be a drone, yeah. <laughs> if we don't get it right. Um, Let's, so it's, uh, and we're think, terrified on that bit. So what goes on in the tent? I mean, well, there's... We've got there's a big bong. Leaderboard. Um, no... There's that, but we can't have handwritten stuff. That's all got to change lawyers, right. you know. We still test cars and stuff. Do you um, do the but, news? Uh, sort of. <laughs> but you can't call it news because the lawyer will come. <laughs> so it isn't news. It's that right. shit news. That old right. um, stuff. So there's like talking. <laughs> and people sit down and then get up. And um, the tea breaks changed. That was never on the telly, but we don't give them crisps anymore. We give them biscuits. That's legally safe. And, uh, and stuff. 
We're going to come on to questions, so do um, send them in on the app if you want, or put your hands up. Um, so that was filmed in South Africa. Yeah. But I don't think Amazon Prime is in South Africa, is it? It's not available at the moment in South Africa. So which do you know which territories you're going to be launched in? Will it coincide with Amazon turning up in different territories? Do you want to ask me when we're going on air? Yeah, when are you going on air? Don't know. <laughs> um, is it autumn, mid-autumn? Uh, we have got no plan. We've not been, they don't tell you a lot. They just got to make the show. <laughs> it's, it's some money, go on, get back in your cot. Right? Um, so there's no plans yet that we know of, but they're going to, you know, they're not, they're not going to take us on, give us a wage of money to do this, and not punt the thing out there. So it, one way or another, it will happen. I, do you know what? I keep asking too, and I keep getting told, shut up. But <laughs> one way or another, it will, it will go out there. They, Amazon keeps stuff to their chest like that about, because they, when they do stuff, it's because they want it to be just be announced and then happen. They don't want speculation. They don't want blah, blah, blah. But they bought a global show, as in, not Top Gear was itself, but they bought three guys with global appeal. So that we're not going to stick in... Germany, Britain, you know, Japan, that sort of stuff. America, it's not going to be that. I can't conceive it. How People in the Yemen want us. <laughs> I'm sure they do. They do. So you've done, you said you, it was 12 shows. Yep. Um, so how long is your deal? Is it 12 shows a year? 12 shows a year, three years. That means Jeremy's got to get in a low-slung car in three years' time and get out of it. I want to be there just to see that <laughs> big puddle of piss in the seat. Um, so and each episode, and we've got option after that if it's a success. Each episode, sixty minutes. Presumably, you could have any length. It's you si want. Well, you remember when we worked with you, you'd say fifty-nine minutes, and then we go, "Can we have sixty-three? And we've gone on a bit this week, and so on. And whoever was coming after us was pissed off on BBC Two. But it's but you haven't got a schedule. We haven't got that problem now. No, so we so can go. So you have variable length. First show was struggling because we've mapped that out and that comes out at 70 odd minutes. And we're thinking that's fine because it's just like, you know, watch it. Um, but we're trying to discipline ourselves to 60 minutes because we do like to talk and go <laughs> on. Um, so we're trying to keep 60 minutes as our discipline, but it's, yeah, it's loose. It's and loose. is there one show, because you used to do studio shows plus a special. Yeah. So have you got one show that's themed? Legally, no. <laughs> um, no, not at all. And might it go out at Christmas time? No, Christ, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, Queen's Speech for us and uh, for your eyes only. That'll be what we're watching. Um, <laughs> OK, so a question has come in on the app. Guess what, Andy, it says. What do you think of the latest series of Top Gear? Really? Do you consider it competition? Do you know what? I never watched it. Oh, come on. What, do you want a lie detector? Whatever, <laughs> bring it on. I didn't watch it um, because there was, you know, a lot of pain for me. Right. It was everything I did. It was, we gave everything to it. So I didn't watch it because when I got asked that question, I, I wanted to say I didn't watch it. That's one thing. That doesn't mean I had any ill feeling towards anybody making it because I know a lot of them and they're brilliant. Yeah, some of them are your old team. Yeah, they're brilliant and they just... They went to work to make their thing. Chris Evans, everybody went to work to make something. Tough gig, following, we'd, we'd done our thing. Mm. Um, but my God, I would not wish them one second of ill that they wouldn't succeed. And I hope they do succeed because, Christ, you can have two car shows. You know, there's, there's plenty of people who don't like, who like cars, who don't like what we do. Um, and they'll, they'll want their car fixed somewhere else. So I, I hope they crack it. So does that answer the question or is that a bit waffly? I think it answers the question. Yeah. Um, hands up uh, as well if you want to ask a question. Um, that one went first. Kenton. Kenton. Have you ever punched Jeremy Force? <laughs> if I get a stepladder. <laughs> no, I haven't. Hugged him. But uh, no, I've not punched him. Throw soil at him, will that do? <laughs> <laughs> Probably yes. not for you. Question in the front. 
Yes, microphone. Um, Top, Top Gear started as a UK show and then went global. I mean, this one starts out as global. Does that change the way you approach things? No, because um, it'd be impossible. What would, if we start going hood, fender, all that sort of stuff, talking Americanisms, or come back with Donald Trump hair and stuff like that, it's like, what would be the point of that? And also, it was, it happened. It had already happened. Something, we never analysed it, but something happened where people wanted to watch it around the world. So we just kind of cross fingers that that will happen again. Because if the main ingredient is still those three guys, that they haven't really changed, you know. And there's a, if you do right by cars and stuff, for people who like cars, there's a universal love language and so on. So I, I don't think that will change anything. We haven't had any calls to say, you know, drink wheatgrass or something. It's been good. Or say fall. Yeah. Fall. Do, do you, so you haven't, you, you don't sort of think about a specific global audience. You're still essentially making no. the three blokes dicking about no. making a BBC Two car I show. Think, I mean, we never did. The, the only difference I think would be is the lead time is longer because from us delivering, sort of finishing the show, to it going out because of all the post, the finishing process. So that will affect... The news. What we say in the studio. <laughs> um, because if you, like, you can say, you know, Boris Johnson this week on the A40. Now, fuck knows what anybody was interested about that watching it around the world, but somebody was. Um, we won't do that. The other thing we might do is, if we are going to places, we'll look at the local colour of the motoring, because why not? you know, the local car culture. I don't know what we'll do when we get back to Britain, but everywhere else we go, we can do that. And that will be a difference. Is the tank coming to Britain this time? Yep. Have you said where? No. Have you said where any know. of the other locations are? Uh, what have we said? California. Are you referring to your lawyer there? Is that? <laughs> no, Amazon marketing. <laughs> California. Uh, California. Right. Yeah. Well, you've got, you got to pretend you like them. <laughs> so we'll be, we'll go there first. Oh, yeah. And then they'll never see us again. Um, well, there is we'll another question on the app saying, will it be broadcast weekly? Will it be released weekly? Or is it all coming at once? Which I, I don't think we know. tried to get out of Roy, but I'm not. I, don't, I honestly don't know because that's their call. You know, in the same way that. Which would you prefer? Weekly because I don't think there's a box set binge thing to be had because there's no thread, there's no plot. Mm. It's not like watching Breaking Bad and you think, shit, what's going to happen next? It's those three do something retarded, next week they do something else retarded, <laughs> and so on and so on. So I'd rather go with Weekly because there's no, there's no thread to do that with. Um, As a production company, are you going to be creating new shows outside of the Grand Tour? Yes, we would like to because... We bought the office, we got a bit big, <laughs> so there's quite a bit of, <laughs> bit of spare desk space. 38 quid a spare foot. Well, there you are. Um, if anyone's uh, looking for to share some, no, we are. Head. Richard's like Hammond is quite a little businessman, is right? he? Little Alan Sugar, yeah, who knew? <laughs> um, so he's building an empire, is he? Uh, yeah, Good yeah, for him. There's a question at the back, Andy. Would you like to see the show get a secondary run on a traditional broadcaster? Yeah, any in mind, but not bothered. Um, no, I've not thought about it. I'd like it to be seen by as many people as possible. However that comes, I don't care. Um, we're in this new world now, so we are being led on that front. Because, like I say, it's, once it's gone, it's Amazon show. They do what they like. I'd be very happy that it can be seen everywhere. And the Top Gears have got quite a good shelf life, it's turned out. I mean, you watch them on Dave and you think, Jesus, but there they are. Um, so I'm hoping this has got a, life, a shelf life too. So we'll be on Dave 8 or <laughs> whatever eventually. So that isn't sorted yet, whether you get a secondary? No, but that's all, to be fair to us and Amazon, all we're doing is getting the show ready. We're still at the stage where... You know, the next big thing for Amazon is all the marketing and the launch of it. They're new in, in terms of they're building all the time as a company on, on this side of it. So that's happening. And I'm not being sort of flippant when I say about the whole 4K post-production. That just swallows everybody's attention. So all I know is 
everybody logically would want to punt it out around the world. But how it's going to happen, I don't know yet. And do you think, given that the DNA of the show was that it was that you know it was always on BBC Two, you always resisted moving to BBC One. Yeah. Um, and it was, you know, you relentlessly did your thing no matter, and it happened almost accidentally to become this global phenomenon. You're now starting from the, from a global platform. Does that, With how does that, legacy. exactly, how does that affect the sort of, your feelings about the show and the way that you go about making it? Well, it's scary because, you know, you go away and you think, does anybody want to see you again? Because a break can make people think, oh Christ, that really is the same old shit. Whereas if there's a, like, a pattern, um, I think we will try harder because now we have to do new things. We're back to where we were in 2002. We've got to embrace failure again. We're going to yeah. try some stuff. So we're, we're looking at this first series like it's not, there's no way can it be perfection. Because we've also gone so one fast, the, we're going to get stuff wrong. One we're of the to, you know, key things, things about the BBC Two show was that you were kicking against the system. You know, it was your kind of rebellious... We're going to try we and kind of sneak this through. How? Why do you think we were kicking against the system? In you were provoking. You were, you were out to provoke. What, the BBC or the public? No, that there was this sort of, you were the rebellious, naughty child on the BBC channel. But we like to make a bit of mischief with our thing, but I don't think we sat down saying, how can we make mischief today? We didn't do that. What we did do is if we thought we'll do something, uh, I remember you getting... Lorry drivers murder prostitutes. You was went not happy with about us. that. Yeah, I know. But we thought, well, that's all right, that's funny. And then we would stick with it. But we didn't sit down and think, right, how many things can we get in the show like that? We just wouldn't censor ourselves when we did think of it. And um, that was a difference. So we didn't provoke, provoke like that. But I don't, I don't have that problem because we're, are, you, are you saying because we're out in the ether now? We've got no parent yeah. to kick. Yeah, there's no editorial policy what breathing do? down your neck. What can you do on that though? We haven't got a parent to kick. There's nothing we can do about that. We'll make our show. And also, how much did the public, us all in telly, that might have been something that gets talked about. But somebody watching the show up in Rotherham, do they give a fuck about what the BBC thought about us? I'm not sure they did. I think okay. they just watched it. That would be my view. Any other questions? Yeah. Have you, have you had anything like um, the slope on the bridge um, situation on this show because it's not on the BBC and so it, it doesn't matter? No, it wouldn't be. No, there's nothing like that. It's, um, and also there are guidelines, you know. There you are have guidelines. read the two pieces of paper. Yeah, yeah. I was showing off. I have read them. Um, <laughs> There are guidelines, and no, there, there is nothing like that. It's, um, I'm, I'm thinking through, it's all, there's mischief, but not anything that would worry anybody coming up. I think we've got time for one last question, if there is one. <clears throat> what did May do to his arm? <laughs> he fell over the night before that film. Um, I wish I could say saving puppy from burning building, but he fell over coming out of a pub, um, and, that was, and then we said, so he rang me up and he went, oh, broken my arm, and we're like, no, this mate, we've got a, this timetable, we're filming. So luckily his car had an automatic, so stuck him on Eurostar, got him out to North France, and then pumped him full of drugs and, um, and left him to it. So I think he did a bit more damage to it during the filming because he had to keep going so he's having a bit of like physio and stuff for it now but he's falling to bits anyway so <laughs> an another bit going isn't gonna you know we're not Usain Bolt territory with that body of his so um, he's okay well look um, I'm sure I speak for everyone I'm sure there's huge anticipation around it it thank looks you. great from what we've seen and um, good luck with it thank you very Thanks much very for much. coming thank you.